Hello everyone. Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome. I'm gonna unmute everyone. Here you go. Everyone is unmuted. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hello. Hello Hi. Kim. Hello Salvi. Hello Florence Hi. and Andrew. Uh, welcome. Welcome on this uh, Twitch channel. Every um, I'm, I'm really happy to host uh, this uh, this event. Uh, today, tonight, we're going to talk about the Young Graduate Trainee Program. Florence is going to explain a little bit more um, what is it. Uh, but first, maybe a, a small introduction. You are here on the Twitch channel. For those who don't know Twitch, the platform, here you can interact using a, a chat, a live chat that you can see just above. So feel free to uh, create an account if you don't have one yet in order to write your questions. And uh, this platform is perfect for interacting. So we are gonna be chatting among ourselves, but we are gonna answer your question and chat with you. It's uh, an honor to be uh, to be hosting this event. We already did it last year, and, uh, and it's a, a great, true joy to do it again. Uh, thank you so much for everyone joining and uh, dropping a small uh, good, uh, good evening in the, in the chat. I hope you are all doing well and we are live for uh, one hour and a half, maybe uh, two hours if you have a lot of questions. Um, but we are just going to go through a little introduction of uh, who are we and uh, who is hosting this, uh, this uh, Twitch chat today. So we'll go in more uh, a deeper intro introduction a, a bit later, but just to introduce uh, today, tonight we have uh, Kim. Uh, Kim, uh, nice to meet you. And Kim, he's a young graduate Hi trainee. There, nice to meet you. Good evening, yeah. everyone. Sorry, you met quite a little bit of delay. Uh, Salvi is also here uh, t tonight. Hello, Salvi. Hi, everyone. Good evening. And we have also uh, Florence and Andrew. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good evening. So um, Kim and Salvi are uh, young graduate trainees currently uh, doing their uh, young graduate trainee uh, at ESA in different sites. We will go uh, after that. Florence and Andrew are uh, responsible for the entry level programs at ESA and more on the recruiter side. And you can uh, you can uh, you will be able to ask them a lot of questions about uh, the recruitment process or what is expected in a in an application for the YGT program. And just to, for an introduction on my side, hi, I'm Corentin, I'm a French engineer. I did a YGT at STEC from 2019 to 2020 and in uh, thermal engineering in STEC. So, and I'm, I'm hosting this uh, uh, event because I launched a broadcast in which I uh, invite some uh, space professional to talk about their 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 work their job the mission they work on and i did a uh, quite a, a few dozens of shows since i launched this uh, this broadcast and today it's a broadcast a little bit particular uh, in english in order to promote the uh, ygt campaign uh, recruitment campaign but first maybe florence you can Give us a small introduction about what is this YGT program? What are we talking about uh, tonight? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Corentin. And uh, first of all, thank you also very much to host us for the second year uh, to speak about the YGT program. I will try to be short because we are going to receive a lot of questions. And uh, I am uh, here with Salvi, Kim and Andrew to, to speak about the program. So. What is the YGT program, the Young Graduate Training Program at ESA? So first, I think it's interesting to say that it was created in 84 with the first YGT starting in 85. So you see that it's a program which has, uh, is quite, uh, let's say, um, famous now also among the community of students. It's a program which, is, which targets students who are in their year of getting a master or who have just let's say graduated, that's very important. Um, we, it's a, an on-the-job traineeship experience, also very shortly, and we will speak about that much more with Kim and uh, Salvi and also with Andrew. 
And what is also very important to know is that at the moment, we have more than 100 traineeship opportunities open for the whole month of February for you to apply. And then you will go, if you are selected, you will go through a selection process. I and mean, if you apply, and then you will go through a selection process. Some of you will be accepted in the selection process. Some of you will be maybe rejected, but that's life. And maybe you can try again next year. But also, if you get selected, you will have one year of contract, maybe two, in a lot of our uh, duty stations across Europe. So I think... Corentin, maybe to just set the scene and say that the life as a YGT, I believe, is a very exciting one. And Kim and Salvi, they will all tell you more about that. And um, yeah, very important to know it's a program that, allow, that, that enables you to acquire your first real professional experience after master in a multicultural international environment. And of course, with fascinating missions and work to do together. Thank you. That's for the introduction, the very official one. And I, I just want to say, want to say uh, thank you to Mimi, who is in the chat and who is uh, posting at the same time some useful links that you yet you can access to. So you will be seeing um, a general link about the YGT, which from there you can have every information you want and also go apply and see the hundred of opportunities uh, directly on the ESA website. Um, let's just probably, uh, now that Florence has set the scene, probably uh, do a, a tour in order to introduce. Um, maybe we, we can start with, uh, with, uh, with Salvi, for example who is a YGT at the European Astronaut Center, Salvi. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what uh, you do? Yes, sure. Um, so I'm working uh, in the crew operation support team at ESC. So it's the team that really supports the astronauts in uh, different types of payloads that we send on the International Space Station. So um, I started as a YGT developing a web-based platform and then I continued with helping the team with different uh, other op operations um, activities, the data transfer, the running some scripts. And I've also recently gotten certified to go on console and send some ground commands to the payloads that we have on the ISS. That must be quite emotional, right? To send your command to space. It was an amazing experience, yes. Yeah. So are you in your uh, first year of YGT or second? So I'm in my second year. I've been working here as a YGT for a year and a half now, approximately. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, hello, uh, Kim. Kim, uh, can you can you speak a bit more about uh, your your job at ESA? Yeah, sure thing. So good evening, everyone. My name is Kim uh, Kim Johnson. I'm a Belgian YGT uh, at Estec in the Netherlands. So we call it the technical heart of ESA. Um, Maybe my YGT doesn't sound as uh, cool as uh, Salvi's with ISS, but um, my YGT is still very cool. But we work with non-full member states, so that are countries that are in the process of becoming a full member state of ESA. And generally, um, we help them expand their space capabilities. Uh, that's a very general thing. Uh, it's okay. a very niche, uh, well, very specific words and terms, but that's basically more, more or less what it is, yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I, I'm sure uh, many people will have the, uh, more questions to have some details about, uh, about you, what you do, exactly. but we can come, that, come to that later. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, can you uh, introduce yourself and describe what you do for, for ESA? Yeah, sure. Um, Andrew, I'm a British YGT, a former YGT, I should say. Uh, I've been at ESA for two and a half years now. Um, so before my current role is the entry level program coordinator. Um, I was working as a YGT at headquarters in Paris um, on diversity and inclusiveness, but also the role um, expanded to be involved in the early stages of developing the ESA accelerators, which uh, maybe some of the viewers might uh, might have read about. Yeah. And so now you're uh, you're taking up the the job of uh, entry level of Florence. Yep. Yeah, entry level. Uh, uh, program manager, nice. So, yep. 
And you, Florence, who are you? And what is your well, story with the YGT program? <laughs> obviously, I'm not a YGT. <laughs> But uh, no, but I've been involved with the YGT community and the entry level programs since uh, since uh, some 15 years actually. And uh, so, as you know, if you want to know something about the program, I probably have the let's say answer at least the formal answer because on the informal side, I think the YGTs have more things to say than me. But uh, yes, I am, uh, let's say, going to leave this job and uh, Andrew is taking over. That's why we have decided tonight to, mm -hmm. to uh, for your, uh, your uh, program, uh, Corentin, to sit together so that uh, everybody sees us together. Mm -hmm. And I'm passing the torch to, uh, to Andrew. <laughs> um, and uh, voila, but uh, again, uh, in this emission tonight, Uh, uh, we will speak about both the formal and informal. And for my, uh, the story about me is more or less that I've been in the agency happily and proudly for 30 years. So, uh, yes, we will speak about again okay. many uh, backgrounds that you all and questions that you will have. Perfect. Um, I see a question raising uh, about is this going to be uploaded on? Um on YouTube after the live, yes, I'm, I'm recording the show and uh, everything will be uploaded in the coming days uh, for free afterwards. You have a link to my uh, YouTube channel with a simple comment. Uh, normally, yeah, there you go. And, and also you can access from this YouTube channel to the broadcast we made last year, uh, in which you can also find uh, very interesting information for the recruitment process, which is also applicable. Uh, uh, but I think this year we'll be giving uh, updates. Updates. Uh, first update that comes to my mind is that I think last year when we made the... Oh, no. I think last year... I thought that last year when we made the, the, um, the broadcast, the YGT program was still... Um, Uh, with an application process in November in order to start for the, the, the year after. But I think it was already the case that you apply in February. That's already three years we do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, my bad. So, first, no, no, it's okay. But it's a, it's a very good uh, opportunity to remind everybody that the, all our opportunities are open since the 1st of February mm -hmm. until end of February. Yeah. And my first tip, which I'm sure that the others are going to, uh, to, to say something about, is don't wait until the last day of February to apply. Is there... Time now, eh? yeah. yeah, is there, is there um, uh, a priority or, or, or do you wait before the end of uh, closing of application, before opening the first CV or are you already starting opening up the CV as they come in? So that's a very good question, actually. A very good. Uh, no, we all our candidates are applying, okay, and we wait for each of the hundred opportunities until we close, and then we pass. The, let's say the, the the next step on to the on the process is with the managers. So when we close, we pass all the uh, applications to the managers, and that's when they start the work to evaluate the applications. Okay. And Andrew, very, very important. Andrew told me today, and I think it was a very good uh, point to say that, in fact, it's not because you apply on the 2nd of February that your application will be handled before the one who is applying on the, applying on the uh, 20th of February. Okay? So it's not that we start, it's not first come, first served. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Huh? okay. Okay. But at the same time, try not to leave it till the very last exactly. minute. Exactly. You never yeah. know it could be a computer glitch or something like yes. this. But, uh, mm -hmm. but in general, just the advice, people take their time to read through the opportunities that uh, to make sure they know which one because you can only apply for up to two YGT positions and we have over 100. So in this case, really take the time over the next month to make sure you do it, but just don't leave it till the last, uh, the last second, just in case. For sure. 
Um, we're going to go doing back and forth between um, answering questions about the experience itself and about the recruitment process on the other side, just to give the, 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 the speech to um, everyone on the, online. And I, I would like to take these questions. Um, what jobs do YGT alumni generally, generally get? Do many stay at ESA, possibly in permanent position? Um, I think I'm I'm going to talk about about I, I can take this question maybe Andrew also you can you can take a, uh, take it afterwards. Um, so I was a YGT uh, for one year and afterwards, I I know many of uh, the YGT I was with at the time at ESA were hired uh, in industry uh, European industry mainly. Uh, some of them stayed at ESA uh, especially as uh, contractors. Uh, very few have been hired as a staff, and uh, but I think the YGT program is also a program dedicated to um, give a, a, a strong technical experience uh, for young people in order for them to uh, um, carry that experience in industry in Europe and, and radiate a little bit the, the know-how of uh, ESA in Europe. And so I think the most of the YGTs are working in space industry in Europe, uh, but a uh, few of them work at ESA now. Andrew, maybe uh, you are a good example uh, of that. Yeah, I, I can even say that myself, uh, at the end of my YGT, I actually became a contractor very briefly okay. between uh, becoming a staff. But the important thing for everyone to know that's watching tonight is that um, ESA has gone through this big retirement wave which is also the corollary of that is that there's a recruitment wave. So as a lot of the people who've been at the agency for a long time are starting to, to leave the position, we need to fill it with new people. And for sure, that can also be people that are coming from the outside, but there's going to be more opportunities than ever before in the next few years for YGTs to convert into uh, staff members or even con convert into contractors because some contractors can eventually become staff members too so yeah it's um it's worth knowing that it's quite an opportune time to to enter the ESA world as a YGT because yeah. there'll be more opportunities than ever before mm -hmm. and furthermore if even if you choose the the industry way you know that after a couple of years in industry you still have a tight um, link with ESA and you're uh, already aware of how the agency works and um, you've been selected once so why not be selected as staff with uh, a few more years of experience uh, and so it makes sense uh, that uh, you this is a really strong opportunity on your cv to just go wherever you like afterwards uh, honestly the doors have opened so widely after my ygt uh, that it's uh, just an insane experience to have your on your on your CV. Corentin, if I may add here also, we have quite a good uh, part of YGTs who also decide to go back to academy and to start a PhD yeah. after the YGT experience. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So everything is possible. Uh, on that point, actually, it's worth mentioning that the current DG himself, former YGT. So yeah, there's a, a, any kind of position we have at this is a, yeah. possible. Who knows? Team. One day you become head of ESA yeah. <laughs> yeah. or Probably. astronaut or uh, who knows? Indeed. Indeed. Uh, a lot of questions are coming in. I'm sorry, everyone. I mean, it's incredible the amount of questions. Um, I'm just going to try to take them as they come. Uh, so a uh, question regarding the starting date of YGT. Does the work always begin in September, October? Yeah, Kim, can you answer that? Yeah, I can maybe add something to that because I was in such a situation as well. And uh, for example, I graduated in the at the end of November and started in December. So if you graduate somewhere in between, let's say September, October, November, as long you, uh, if you want, if you go through the interviews, as long you discuss about it, it is totally possible that you can start at a later date. It's not going to be like half a year later or very, you know, pushing it towards the end. But um, even last year, we had the YGD starting in January. Okay. So as long if you are the perfect suitable candidate, um, things can be uh, negotiated. Yeah, exactly. That's really good. What it, 
what is important here? Uh, sorry, I will try to add things which are uh, more on the formal side, but it's which are important. So, yes, we target September, let's say October, so that we try to have a group of YGT coming together. However, it's true what Kim is saying. If you graduate a bit later or because you have another really uh, commit real commitment and you can start only in November and everybody agrees you're the future tutor and us in HR, then it's possible. What is very important, we will not push too much towards the year after eh, because the idea is that we'll start in 23. But also, you will apply as for the YGT program, maybe you will not be yet graduated, as Kim was mm -hmm. saying. What is important is that when you start at ESA, you have your master. So this is a mandatory condition. Okay, so okay. that's very important. Um, I have a few questions popping in about the CV, the format of the CV. Do we include the picture or not? Well, is the Europa CV mandatory? Um, I think we had this uh, this question last year as well. And many people are asking the questions about the the format and if I don't uh, put my CV this size, it will be rejected. Or what, can you can you give us a more more clues on that? Maybe shall I start or Salvi? Maybe you want to say first something and then we uh, we add on the formal side after that. That's for sure. Um. So I think your CV just should really have everything you want to share with ESA on the application that you're sending. Um, so I put everything. I didn't put the picture. That was my own choice. But I think you can also put yours. Um, but really, um, don't ha it doesn't have to be too long or too short. It does have to be completely according to the position you're applying for. Yeah. Okay. So then on the recruiter side, what I would say is your application should really be your application. So we are not looking for Europa, something completely standardized, because we want to understand a bit through your application and your uh, letter who you are. So you will, in any case, have to apply through the system, the ESA HR system. This is standard. OK, everybody answers the same question in the same format. But your letter and your CV can be very personal. And as Salvi just says, just show us, tell us who you are. We can speak for hours about the CV and the motivation letter, but on the photo, your choice. We are very flexible on that, you know? Yeah, I would say I would add that, you know, you know, we're the European Space Agency and not every country follows the same, the same standards. I'm from the UK where it's pretty much a negative almost to include your your photograph on your CV, mm -hmm. which is in a big contrast to somewhere I know in the French case that uh, it's more common to see to see a photograph. But we, we're from every different uh, member state that we have uh, has a different approach. So you won't be discriminated against. Just make sure it's interesting and reflects your um, your passion for the role that you're applying for. OK. Um, perfect. I think that sums it up for the for the CV. Um, question uh, for you, Kim and Salvi. In which subjects did you graduate it? And is there an age limit to the YGT program? Uh, maybe, uh, Salvi, you want to start uh, about your, your degree and your... Um, so yeah, I did a master's in software engineering from Paris. Um, and then right after my master's, I joined ESA um, for the age limit. I think Florence uh, is the one who can answer. Um, but maybe we go to Kim then before uh, about the subjects. Uh, so what did you graduate in, uh, Kim? So I graduated in aerospace engineering in the Netherlands at uh, TU Delft. Um, yeah, so that's basically it, yeah. OK, perfect. And so concerning the, yeah, yeah, yeah so go ahead. Before the Kim, just to uh, you say you are you graduated from TU Delft in aerospace engineering, so it was more technical degree that you got, and then at ESA yeah. you have been selected on a position which is not that much technical. Exactly, yeah. So um, it's more industrial policy, so there's not much of the engineering in literally that I applied to, um, but still 
uh, you know, if if you do research and and this position looked very interesting to me because I wanted to see maybe like a different side of the space uh, industry. Um, th this is also possible. So you don't really have to only focus on maybe the the positions that you studied <coughs> as long as you show the passion and the enthusiasm and you yeah. did your research. It's also still um, you may have a chance as well. And if I may add to that also, uh, I think uh, Isa is not looking for for people who already know everything about space. Um, I I think that many people fear that they can't apply for to Isa because they they are not uh, graduated in aerospace or space systems. Uh, actually, I had a couple of YGTs that. Uh, joined the same year as me, uh, were totally new to space. They applied to ESA because they had a background is in, for example, um, uh, radio frequency electronics, but applied on uh, uh, phones or uh, Wi-Fi, uh, and and then they applied their knowledge to radio frequency for satellites, which is the same physics. It's just for for not for the same application, and. ESA is really looking into uh, giving the YGT program as a way for people who uh, want to enter into uh, the space sector or to diversify their, their knowledge. So I think it's um, don't put yourself any barrier on the application. Uh, you, you can get into space uh, and maybe it's not ESA, but maybe it's somewhere else, but you, you can do a lot of stuff related to uh, space uh, sector, even if you have not graduated from it. And yeah, just to add, because I also started just with building some uh, platform and after all, afterwards, even though I didn't have any aerospace background or any knowledge in the op operations parts of this, I still managed to, you know, get through the training and get the certification. So we also at ESA, we also have this um, possibility to learn on on the spot it's on the job training and uh, you know um, go into a different aspect that's different from where we what we learn and what we studied yeah and just to go back on the question of the age yeah um, so on the age we don't have a specific age limit okay that's very important for you to remember however what is important to remember is also is that we, our candidates should have, and selected candidates, have between zero year of experience after master up to one year when they apply, okay? Meaning that if, as we said before, if you are still studying at master level and you will graduate, let's say, in June 23, you can apply in February. If you graduated in 22, you can apply to the YGT, okay? What is important is that you don't have too much experience. So that's why we say zero to one year, because this program is conceived and made for people, young people who don't have yet professional experience and will acquire this first experience to kick off the career. That's the, the fundamental principle of the Young Graduate Trainee Program. Mm -hmm. And another thing which I wanted to add here is about diversity. Andrew mentioned the fact that we are going to enter a big recruitment wave. And what we want to do with that also is exactly what we have just discussed now, is that we don't specifically want everybody to come with the same kind of background. We strongly believe that diversity in all its form is important and make teams richer and more successful in the end. You know, so be it in the background, in the education, in where you come from, uh, in terms of studies, areas of interest, culture. So this is also a very important point, which I think is worth mentioning here tonight. For sure. Um, I'm just gonna go go through the questions because we have so much. Uh, thank you for your questions, everyone. Um, I'm afraid we can't take them all. I'm trying to regroup them in um, 
in one to summarize a bit uh, there's been uh, this question popping on se several several times uh, concerning do we add a recommendation letter to the to the application is it mandatory is it advised no you don't need to do it okay and you will see when you apply, we, we ask you to uh, want to uh, have some reference, but you don't need to add recommendation letter. We don't <clears throat> ask for that. Very clear. Okay. If you want to do it, you do it, but we don't ask for that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, can I try to send my resume if I have all the requirements, but I graduated two years ago in February 2021? I, I could jump in here and yeah. say that leading on from what Florence was saying about we don't have an age limit, we just have a, an experience limit. So if you graduated two years ago, but you haven't been working for the whole two years, this isn't a problem. Like it's it's more about the fact your your experience after your master's degree. So if you've been maybe only working part time or not specifically like in a, a graduate scheme, you're more than welcome to apply. There's, there's no limit there. It's just really the program is designed for people trying to get their, their very first experience after a master's. So if you mm -hmm. haven't had that, for whatever reason, after you graduated, you're still welcome to apply. It, it, it might be worth uh, mentioning that ISA also has other entry level programs for people who have a little bit more uh, work experience. I think it's uh, three or four years of work experience. Uh, uh, just to mention it, Florence, can you add on that? Yes. Yeah, we, we it's, uh, thank you very much, uh, Courantin, to bringing that uh, up. It's, uh, you, we have created and launched uh, last year the junior professional program for those who have a little bit more experience uh, and it's uh, two to three years of experience. So indeed, in the past, we also had candidates to the YGT program who had more experience. Now we want them to apply in two years when it comes again, the program to the junior professional program. Another one, which is very important, is those of you who have a PhD or are about to graduate, um, to, to get a PhD, do not apply to the YGT. It's not the program for you. you the program for you is the research fellowship program. Yeah. And today, tonight we're talking exclusively about the YGT program. Um, and there may be a question for you, Kim and, and Salvi, during the application process. Many people are asking um, either they should or not apply for the two uh, for two positions, because as a reminder, you can apply up to two positions. Uh, what did you do when you applied? Did you choose only one or did you apply to two positions? Uh, Salvi, maybe. Um, oh, yeah. Keep, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I uh, personally, I applied for two positions, and I was actually one was more relevant to what I studied and what I was doing through my thesis, and the other position was this position that I'm doing now, the industrial policy, and that was because it really interested me. I really wanted to see how it's done, etc. So I would say, if you want to apply for two positions, don't just apply for the sake of applying. Just look for applications that really interest you. If it's just one, then I would say go for this one um, and then give you everything for this position. But if there's another position that also interests you a lot, then then I would say, yeah, you can try. But yeah, just don't apply for the sake of applying because you could see that and it would reflect in your motivation letter. And yeah, yeah then your chances are slimmer, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. I agree. I, I also applied for um, two uh, applications and um, the, the two were really linked to what I had studied and what I had done in terms of projects. So they were they were two that I really went to the offers again and again, and I found the two best ones that I could match the most with them. So I completely agree with what Kim said. Did you did you did you do a, a, a different um, um, CV, a different a personalized CV for each of the applications? Yes, I modified my CV a bit, and definitely the motivation letter was um, personalized for each application. Yeah. Okay. For me, it was the same CV, but indeed a personalized motivation letter. Okay. So what I want to add here, because it's very important for our audience, we. 
where you apply is a system, is an information system, a platform, call it what, what you want. I don't know exactly how to say now, but we see all applications. So if Salvi, Kim, Andrew, whoever applies to two positions, we see the two positions to which you apply, let's say, you know? So uh, in your motivation letter, if you want to say, I apply for number uh, one, two, three, four, but I also have applied to uh, three, four, five, six, <laughs> let's say, uh, it's okay, it's okay. But I think that it's very good what Salvi and Kim have done to just explain why they have applied to this one and to this one. And if the motivation is a bit different, no problem. You probably have a very good reason why you like this opportunity and this one. Just <coughs> tell us. Of course, what, we, what I should ask you is, what happens if you apply to more than two? So that's ah, very important for the people watching. Very good. Yeah. If you apply to more than two, you will be automatically rejected. And when I say automatically, I tell you it's one second after you have just posted your uh, your uh, applications. So limited to two maximum. Uh, we don't care if they're totally different fields. Take your time to look at the two that you want to apply to, but don't do more than two. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be a waste of time for you. Um, and you can apply to two different. Sorry, uh, Cora. Yeah. Uh, you can apply also to two positions which are in different duty stations. So, for example, <laughs> in EAC in Germany and in uh, Italy, as long yeah. as uh, these two positions have a relevance for you. We have a great YGT called Anna who applied uh, in STEC but ended up in ISAC in Madrid. She applied for both positions, uh, not on the same site. It's not a requirement. And uh, uh, she's very uh, pleased from the event we did the other day. She's very content with how it's going. So keep it in mind. Yeah. Keep an open mind. Um, I have a question on a con uh, from Laura, who is uh, um, who is asking that uh, she knows there are some YGTs that are almost the same, if not the same, to some internships. What would you su suggest to do if nothing has still not been decided for the internship? Are those different people looking at the application? Okay, so I think that's probably a question for me. Um, first of all, you can apply to an internship and you can apply to a YGT. Okay, so that's nothing. The one doesn't impede the other. Okay, internships are, uh, is the program for students who are not yet graduated. But obviously, if you are studying today for your master, we are in February, and you apply, and you get an internship, which will finish by the summer or just in September, in October, you and you are selected for the YGT, in October, you will start with your YGT. Okay? So, of course, if you are just about to graduate or you have just graduated, mm -hmm. the difference is your graduation. You know, yeah. Um, the, the requirement, the main thing to say maybe is that for the YGT, it's absolutely a requirement that you have a master's degree when you start, and for an internship, it's absolutely a requirement that you're still a student. Exactly. That can the application time is for people in their last year of the master's. It can overlap, mm -hmm. so you're totally welcome to apply as long as you fulfill both of those. You won't be treated any differently, mm -hmm. um, and of course. An internship is absolutely not a prerequisite to join as a YGT, yeah. but it doesn't, doesn't hurt. It's like you get to know the agency a bit more and get the feel of, of what kind of uh, role you might be interested in, but um, it's, it's not a prerequisite. Yeah. Um, a question maybe for you, Kim and Salvi. So do you stay at the same location for the whole year uh, or can you change location once or twice during the year? So, Salvi, you're fixed in uh, EAC, right? And between your, even during the a single year of YGT, you stayed at the same location? Yes. Uh, so, for the past year and a half, I've been at the European Astronaut Center um, in Cologne, Germany. Uh, but we do work with people that are from the, the other ESA site. So, we have gen general meetings um, every week. So, we don't move, but we collaborate with people from different sites. 
Yeah. And also maybe it's, it's a good time to say that you can move f uh, punctually at different sites because you have uh, be, been part of the organization of the Young Professional Event, which is an event gathering the uh, the young uh, the young uh, students or the young YGTs at ISA from all the sites, and so it's an opportunity opportunity to meet in in person uh, all the people from different sites, right? Yes, yes, and actually um, it's on point because there was a question about if we're doing some cool projects um, at work apart from our normal jobs and yes so i'm part of this young isa so which is uh, the whole the, the whole young, young professional at isa that have this um, group called young isa and we have different ac activities we have some conferences that are every fridays called fascinating fridays there's a group for the young professional event the one that i led last year and then we organize at estec um, the young professional event where all the professionals for all these aside got a chance to come to STEC to meet to every other one, whether it's a YGT, whether it was a research fellows, junior professional interns, everyone got to meet, talk, network, and then learn new stuff with uh, science talks and with special guests. Yeah, so that was a unique experience. <clears throat> that's awesome. And also concerning also side projects, uh, I'm not sure you, you guys are, are part of it, but there's uh, this... Uh, uh, young, uh, young uh, is a satellite that is being built. YPSAT, uh, YPSAT right? Uh, Kim, can you can you take, talk a, a bit more about this program? Yeah, so YPSAT is actually um, a project created only by young professionals from start to finish. And what is actually really exciting about this is that um, it will be a payload on the Ariane Six maiden flight, and they will actually capture the the whole. Uh, launch of the Ariane uh, 6. So it will be three hours, sort of more or less, uh, a mission lifetime of three hours. But the beauty of this um, this project or mission, we can call it a mission, is that everything is done by young professionals. Of course, you have the help of the ESA experts, but you've got um, teams that are doing the systems engineering, you've got the telecoms, you've got the ground support stage. So really it's, and this is besides your YGT as well. So this gives you like, a very good uh, insight of how to do missions actually on on such a high uh, mm -hmm. European space industry level, and, and you can even really you can even get really involved good. in a, in a in a technical aspect that that you know you're not working on in your normal YGT. You could do thermal engineering if you are in the policy group, or you can you can I guess you can just switch uh, and learn exactly. something more, right? If you have skills to offer and. And this is really good practical experience as well. And uh, yeah, in the end, let's say after your YGT, uh, this is really something that you can talk uh, talk during your uh, you know your talks with your future employer maybe. So yeah, this just shows that um, your YGT there's so much other stuff around it that that it's just up for grabs and it makes the the whole experience even better. So. Great. I must say that it's amazing to see uh, uh, the, the team is very big eh, uh, now and they are all working at, uh, at the project uh, outside, let's say, working hours in the free time. Eh? So it's, uh, it's really a nice, uh, and, and Salvi, I think, and him, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you are all from different sites also working mm -hmm. on that project. So even people from ESRIN or from uh, ESAC in Spain, ESRIN is in Italy, for those who don't know, uh, or from EAC in Germany can work at this YPSAT. Yeah, indeed. So it's not just um, limited to wherever you are, which location. It's really uh, an all-encompassing project. Yeah. yeah. And the good thing to mention maybe is that, okay, this is the first one yeah. uh, is gone on Ariane 6, but there's already plans for another one. YPSAC so if you join as a YGT uh, this year, you might have the opportunity to work on YPSAT too. Yeah. yeah so exactly. nice. <laughs> it should be on the Space Rider this time. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. 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 Lots of uh, a few more arguments to 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 apply. Um, uh, speaking about the sites, uh, the ESA sites, I saw questions concerning. Uh, there's not many YGT opportunities in EAC and a lot of internships and uh, also there is a lot of YGTs at STEC and 
Could you explain a, li a little bit more uh, why there is uh, so much more YGTs offered in STEC than in other ESA sites? Yes. Um, so first of all, STEC is the biggest, let's say, uh, uh, establishment of ESA. The core, you said it, uh, Corentin, I think, when we started the, the, tonight, it's the core of the technical, let's say, activities of ESA. It was and Kim's, so, yeah. It was Kim's sentence, was yeah. Kim. Okay, so that's very important because, indeed, in STEC, we have all the programs of ESA are uh, represented and we have a lot of technical expertise. And as I said, we have, at the moment, uh, we have more than 1,000 uh, staff, uh, 2,000 with uh, other contractants and YGTs and research fellows. So it's a huge establishment. And this is also why we have, let's say, 60% of our opportunities are indeed in, uh, in STEC. Then we will have probably 10, 12 uh, positions uh, in ESOC in Germany next to uh, near to Frankfurt. Uh, the same 12, 13 positions in S3 in Italy, near to Rome, and uh, in uh, EAC, they will have three, four YGT positions. It's true. It's very true. Uh, it's much less than in terms of interns. But for the interns in EAC, they have a lot of projects. Huh? Uh, Salvi, you can really speak about that because you are part of the group there. They have a lot of uh, activities and projects, uh, punctual projects for students there in EAC, correct? Yes, yes. So they are in a group called Spaceship EAC, and they really have different areas of research where they keep working and finding new ideas. And that's why they are interns, so new people can come in and fill in the project with their new ideas and keep the project becoming bigger and bigger. That's why they are more, way more interns. We are probably four or five YGTs here, indeed, but a lot of interns. And we have a really nice group of young professionals, even if they are interns and we are YGTs. There's no difference. We all go together for lunch. We all spend time together. We, we, also, we... maybe worth mentioning on, sorry, uh, Quarantan, on no, the we... establishment's uh, point of view, 2023 is quite a special year um, for the YGT campaign because for the first time in, in many years, we're actually opening a position. I've opened a position in... Yeah. The European spaceport in French Guiana, so in Kourou. It's a very unique opportunity. It hasn't happened in the past few years, but it just goes to show that, um, of course, the majority of the positions are in STEC, but really they're spread across all of our establishments in Belgium, in Paris, uh, in Frascati, in Madrid, in uh, Oxford, um, Darmstadt, Cologne, and French Guiana, even. So, and yeah, one, even Washington, one DC. Washington. Even Washington, in Washington. DC. Yeah one position because we have an office there it's yeah. not an establishment yeah. it's just an office okay okay um i'm gonna take these really specific questions but i think it's it's um it's useful to take it here because otherwise i'm afraid the person will never have his answer or her answer um where is the best place uh, to describe extenuating circumstances on the application which have affected my degree um, Corentin, uh, can you repeat the question? Where so, is the specific place where I can express? describe extenuating circumstances on the application which have affected my degree? So this is circumstances that have affected this person's degree, and um, that she or he would like to specify on the somewhere on the application. Yes. Um, yes, it's possible. How to do? Yeah, I mean, I would say not the cover letter is probably the best place, but we actually have a specific section when you go yeah. through the application process yes. where you can mention this. In the application? Yeah, right? yeah. In uh, the system yeah. itself? Before okay. you press submit, you will have to see a box where it will say that. And I might want to take this opportunity also to say that a similar extenuating circumstance that we've had in the past is we've had a lot of students with a disability who've come to us and ask, should I put the fact that I have a disability or there's something where I might require extra time if I'm going through the interview process? Absolutely, we're not discriminating at all. In fact, it's good for us to know so that we can make the playing field as equal as possible so that when you're going through an interview, maybe you need a bit extra time for, for whatever reason that you have. Um, we really wanna encourage people to be open. We're very inclusive of people who 
um, who have a disability. And so please let us know. And, and even I would say, for example, you have a visual impairment or yeah. you have uh, an hearing impairment, huh? we will make it possible yeah. to have the interview adapted to the circumstances. That's absolutely possible. Yeah. Okay. And to go back on the, uh, let's say, circumstances that can affect your, uh, your degree, yeah. whatever, you have this uh, little box, in fact, where we ask you if, I don't remember exactly the, 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 the precise uh, description, but we say, is there anything you want to share with us that is important for you, that you want us to know? Mm. So there, please, if you consider there is something very important for you that we should know, tell us. Because always remember, and this is for ESA, but for any employer, potential employer, your letter, your application, your CV are the first, uh, let's say, uh, elements that is uh, that that make us mm, that we how can I say that uh, that we will see to know you a little bit better, and that will give us the let's say the will to invite you for an interview. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bounce back on a question regarding uh, disability as well. Um, there's a position that I want to apply to, but the location is not accessible by public transport and I cannot drive because, because of disability. Is that an issue? Uh, here I would say to the person, please apply. Apply and tell us what is your situation. And we... We'll take that into account. We will see if it's not possible, we will tell you or we will not recruit you because we don't want you to be in a bad position. But if you feel that you want to apply or if you want to ask us a specific question on your individual situation, uh, there is uh, an address where you can write to us. And I'm sure that Mimi in one way or another, we'll find it and we'll uh, write it. It's uh, contacthumanresources.esa.int. Uh, you mm -hmm. can explain us your situation and we will answer you. Yeah. Okay, that's very clear. Um, a question I, I've seen coming up uh, several times about, so when we see there are a hundred of uh, different uh, uh, positions open, right? Are they um, more than one available position per application uh, open? Like for example, example there is a YGT in thermal engineering. Is there a possibility for you to recruit more than one people in thermal engineering? Or are you seeking one per application? In principle, we have one person for one position. Okay. Unless specified. Okay. But, but, when we uh, go uh, along the selection and we have interviews, we may have backup candidates. So if we select you to come for an interview, so you will have a pre-selection uh, interview maybe, and maybe Salvi and uh, Kim can say more about that if they have experienced this situation, so pre-selection, and then you go to the final interview. You may be selected after the fi final interview, but you may be a backup. Backup means that you are a very good candidate, but maybe someone had a better profile than you, okay, or made a better interview than you, okay? And let's imagine that the first candidate would, for one reason or the other, refuse our offer. We may contact the backup candidate afterwards. Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. Um, a question concerning uh, the insights. Uh, how many applications did you receive last year? <laughs> <laughs> last year, it was around 7,000. 7,000. The year before, something like 9,000. But because we had the new junior professional program where we targeted people with more experience, last year, we had a little bit less uh, candidate chance for the YGT program, but it was around 7,000. Okay, which is a lot already. And you take which only a uh, hundred on that. <clears throat> but 
110 people manage to get the position, meaning yeah. it's not impossible. No, for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Is an integrated master uh, MSCI valid? I will not have a Bachelor of Science to apply my in my application. I don't know what is an integrated master, but uh, if you I don't... Think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that might be from someone who's in the UK. I think it's more of a common uh, master's degree in the UK. Okay. And all, all that we say is a master's degree is a requirement. It doesn't... You don't even have to have an MSc. I'm not from a scientific or technical background. I have an MA. It's mm -hmm. a Master of the Arts. And so the fact it's uh, an integrated master's is not the issue. It's just that you have to have a master's degree. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, question. I want to know if ESA is a good path for an economic geologist with planetology studies on Mars. I don't see a perfect match within the YGT programs. Is there some somewhere I should try to reach? Um, I mean, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, well, what I would say to, to this question is, of course, we will not. You will not find the opportunity yeah, with exactly. the perfect match to your studies. Okay, so maybe you have to be a bit flexible, a bit of mm -hmm. curious, open-minded, and look what is in your studies and in your interest. What you find in one, two, three opportunities, and see, as we said at the beginning of the program, what is the one that matches best your interest and profile. But honestly, yes, with the the question you you gave us, uh, Corentin, I don't think you will find the opportunity matching specifically that profile. No, but it's it's good to look at the experience of Kim in the past. I mean, exactly. you, Kim, you, did, you didn't do the exact same thing uh, as, as your degree for your YGT position. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for example, the person who's asked this question, they're talking, I believe, an economist aspect at the beginning. We yeah. have um, we have an economist, a role that will be suitable for an economist open in Vienna, for example. Yeah. Um, and yes, so why not utilize that aspect of your degree? Uh, you could put it there. It's, it's not a problem. But we have more and more so what is important for the audience to know is that we have more and more of these positions also mm -hmm. where you are maybe you will not be you will not have the task of an engineer like in uh, radio mm -hmm. frequency optical mechanical thermal but more generic mm -hmm. which will still require a scientific yeah. or engineering knowledge. Yeah. That's very interesting because we have uh, more positions in that sense. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm, I'm going through the questions at the same time. I see uh, new questions <coughs> popping up and we are we have already answered. So for everybody who is uh, joining currently the, the program, welcome first. Uh, we started this program uh, uh, one hour ago. And if you've missed uh, the first hour, don't worry. It will be uploaded uh, in the coming days on YouTube. Um, so concerning the questions about the uh date of grade gradation of the masters all that counts is that you have one uh, at, at most one year of professional experience between your graduation and the start of your YHG and uh, and that's it so um so a question in the application is it necessary to talk about previous job experiences but I haven't graduated yet, so I can't talk about uh, the job experience. So what can I do? <laughs> so uh, two aspects of um, my answer has two aspects here. On the application form, we ask you indeed about the experience. But we know that for the YGT program, our candidates don't have experience. So you just put Either you put not applicable or you just put no experience. But if you have some experience, which is uh, also in, um, let's say, uh, summer jobs or this kind of uh, activities, you can put it there. Okay. So that's one thing. In the application form, do not worry if you cannot fill in all the boxes because we know for the YGT program that it's like that. Now, for your CV, 
and your motivation letter, that's the same thing. We know that you cannot have uh, very much experience. What is important is that you share your interest and your will, your uh, curiosity, your, uh, what you have done as a project at university. I mean, there again, Kim, Salvi, Andrew can uh, speak better than me, but all this aspect is very important of what you have done aside your studies. Yeah, I could also add that maybe, I, I know myself from the examples in the UK and Ireland that a lot of students might take a few years between their bachelor's and master's and they might have had some experience then. And for, for sure you should mention it, but we, we really just want to emphasize it's the experience after your master's that is the, the, the thing that we're most uh, concerned about. And if you have made a few internships yeah. before yeah. your master, share it, yeah. say it, it's exactly. important. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, I think we are going to uh, give the, the speech, the floor to Kim and Salvi about the interview process. I see a lot of questions uh, raising up about the interview process, how many interviews do we attend? I think the best would be, Salvi, could you talk us through the, uh, from your application process to your selection, what were the steps and what did you go through? Um, yes, yeah, sure. So when I got to know that the applications were online, so I went on the website, I checked every single one, I read every single one more than once, two times, three times, just to make sure that I was looking into every single aspect of the application, what was needed, what I had done before that, that could match. And I came up with first one favorite uh, application and then a, a second one. So I had my two favorite job offers that I wanted to apply to, and I worked on my CV to make sure I can showcase how I match for these uh, positions. And then once I applied afterwards, so for me, it took a month and a half. I received um, an email saying that I was uh, in invited for a first uh, meeting on Teams. So I didn't go through the other pre-selection application that I used to uh, people, some people have. I had two um, interviews. Um, so the first one, um, it was mainly to see if I was who I was telling I was in my CV and, and, and letter. So there was questions about my background, what I had done, what, what projects, and um, how much I had learned. And also questions about ESA, if I knew what ESA is, if I knew the projects that are going on at the moment. And because um, I was going to work at the European Astronaut Center, I had some questions about the astronauts, the new um, astronauts that are going on the ISS, um, who's actually at, on the ISS right now, which project are going on so there was this questions and um, the, the, the team who um, was giving the interview was doing the interview with me they also introduced me to the to the project I would be working on they told me what their requirements were what I would have to do and if it matched uh, what I wanted to do so that was the first interview and then in the second one um, I had some HR related questions about what if I was willing to move to this other country by myself, um, how, would I, how was I seeing myself uh, living in Germany. And because I had been introduced to the topic in the first interview, they asked if I had thought about how I'm, I was going to program this platform that they needed, if I had some ideas, if I had thought about it, if I had looked on the project online, which I had done which I then showcased that I had uh, done some research and I came up with the proper solution that I wanted to go this and this way. That's how I wanted to do things. Mm -hmm. So I had these two interviews and then afterwards, I think a month after my second interview, I got the call that I was selected. Okay. And how many time um, uh, was spent between the first and the second uh, interview? Um, that was also about a month, I'd say. Okay. Okay. Very clear. Uh, thank you. Maybe Kim, you can talk about your experience. It probably is a, a bit different, I assume. Yes. Yes, it is indeed <clears throat> a bit different. Um, so before, when in February the applications um, went online, I, I actually, with a good friend of mine, we iterated and we gave feedback to each other's CVs and motivation letters, almost six, seven, eight iterations. 
and that I would say like preparation is really key. Like really focus. It's one month. It's only four weeks, and just try to give you everything, because indeed, as uh, Florence said before, this is your the first actually contact with ESA or this this ESA's first contact with you. And then after the the application and sending in the documents, um, it took about two or three weeks before getting the email for the first interview. Luckily. Um, also for this, I would suggest to really check your spam folder as well, because all my emails, they, uh, I received them in my spam folder. <laughs> so it was quite a surprise that, uh, when I looked it up in the spam, there was only like an interview, uh, email. Um, but yeah, my, the first, I had two in total. The first interview was just actually, um, questions on the screen, on a computer screen. And it's called Cameo. I'm not sure if the name is still, uh, the same. Uh, but if you have such an interview, it, it, the, the website itself also <coughs> gives you explanation of how, how it's being done. And you can also exercise there. And again, here, really try your best. Um, I did a lot of research. For example, personally, um, I made different PowerPoints, each slide containing a question. And I would put my personal things that I would like to mention should, should, should uh, such a question come up. And I did it for ESA knowledge, uh, for HR questions that you can just find on the internet. Um, so the internet is a really good source for that. And that, I think that also really helps a lot during such an interview, because it's basically five questions. Um, you get 30 seconds per question. It starts recording for two minutes, and then it goes on to the next question. And you have to so speak the, have... to the camera in, in the microphone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's a one recording, so you don't have a second attempt. It's uh, it's from start to finish uh, one recording. Um, and after that, I think it took um, also about three, four weeks uh, for the final interview. And also for that, again, try to research as much as possible. Because if you would not be selected in the end, which is really not, not a bad thing at all, um, I think for me, in my case, I would have already know that I tried my best and I'm happy with the things I did and how I did it. And that already gives a good motivation because even if you went through the, the first uh, interview, but were not invited to the last interview, it still meant you were invited to the first interview. It's a really good thing. You stood out from other people and that should also give you motivation to, you know, that you did your best and your profile is actually really interesting. And yeah, for sure, for sure. And all, all the work you perform um, on refining your CV and your motivation letter is also um, some time that is already won on the next application if you want to apply elsewhere exactly. afterwards. So yeah. you come in prepared and then you're prepared for whatever comes, uh, either it is a or, or else. Indeed. Yeah. And if I may add to that as well, um... Also, if you've got questions or you want to reach out to current YGDs, try, try to do so. We've, we've sat at the same uh, position and place where you're sitting right now. And we, we love to help because we've, um, we've gone through this experience ourselves. And um, also, again, in my case, um, I reached out to some current YGDs back then. And I also asked, you know, just for a quick video call or a quick call, may I ask some questions, this and that. And they were all super, super helpful. And yeah, we're also here to help you. So if you have any questions, I mean, don't, totally. be, don't be scared to reach out. It's, it's really uh, okay. And we, we, we'd love to help. Yeah. Well. yeah. I, I receive uh, also messages uh, each year oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's great. It's also a way for us to keep connecting with the new, uh, newcomers uh, at ESA. So everybody who I know loves it. So yeah, feel free yeah. To, to reach us. Uh, uh, Corentin, can I add something here? Oh, sure. yeah, yeah. Uh, on the on the two three points which Kim and Salvis mentioned. So first of all, you can see that they both really prepared for the interview, and I think this is key. <coughs> Coming to the interview prepared, and I would say, don't um, neglect the part of your motivation and why you have chosen this position. Because this is your life, your motivation and what you have studied. You know, it's not something that you cannot know. <laughs> you are the only person to know what you want to do. So prepare on that. I think that the also the, the tip of um, Kim that preparing with a friend is very good and speaking loud. Because at the interview, you will have to speak English. Not everybody is fluent in English. Not everybody uh, knows all the words, and it doesn't matter. But at least it's 
it can be uh, it can be a bit tricky also when you are not mm. uh, English mother tongue or you have not studied in English. That's another thing. So prepare and speak loud. Yeah. And another thing on the uh, video interactive tool, we know it's not an easy one. It's not easy to stand in front of a camera, speak alone, answer a question. You're not sure about the answer. Again, all candidates say it, it's not easy. And just try to be as uh, natural as possible. If you make a mistake, if you say a wrong word, don't worry. No problem. Maybe you want to say it, you know, and uh, that you made a mistake or that you got it wrong. So just try to relax if it's possible <laughs> to relax. Kim, you can tell us. <laughs> Ah, better. So also for the first interview at the end of, if you have um, a computer interview, you also have um, room or two minutes to just say anything what you want or ask anything. I would also um, advise you to use that time um, because, for example, I thought some questions I could have answered way better. So I also said I was quite nervous and I think I should have answered this a bit more in that direction and just be be honest there. So if you maybe messed up with one question you can use that section also to just be honest about it and say yeah but maybe i want to say um, i mean you don't have to say everything but just to leave enough breadcrumbs uh, for them to be interested in you because um we all make mistakes like for said this interview is not not the most uh, fun interview ever yeah but it's also an experience and we all have to go through it well some of us <laughs> I, I had I had to go through it also. It was uh, really stressful, and yeah. but uh, what helped me was I don't know if it's still the case, but I could train to um, for a couple. Uh, so there was some dumb questions or standard questions, and I could train recording myself or using the tool, and uh, this was uh, really helpful before starting the actual interview. So I trained uh, a couple of times and then uh, I was ready. But uh, it is it is quite stressful, I must say. Yeah. And it's maybe what for yourself as well. Do you I look back say, at your own recording? Sorry. And no, no. It's, it's, uh, sorry, Kim. I was going to say, if you are stressed about it, you, I'm sure you can go on YouTube and see generic, not ESA specific, but generic cameo interview tips or, you know, these tips for these video mm -hmm. platforms or on Reddit or on some forums. You'll you be able to find something. You can prepare even in advance for something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a good question coming on uh, um, about, are there some groups to exchange, exchange information? So it's probably a good question for before getting selected, but also after getting selected. Um, is, did you, for you, Kim and Salvi, did you uh, get in touch with other uh, YGT candidates when you tried to apply? Or um, or did you do it on on your own apart from your close friends I, I, that you mentioned, Kim? Um, um, I did reach out to YGTs who were working at EAC because I wanted to know how the site was, what were the the, the, the projects going on. But I didn't know anyone else who was applying at the same time as me. Okay. But I think I would have loved to have some people so we can share our knowledge, share our uh, experience, and then like Kim did. Uh, have some uh, review for our CVs and motivation letters. But for me, it was my family who helped me. Okay. And for you, Kim? Yeah, also, um, I didn't reach out to people that I, I, I knew that were applying as well, except for that one friend. Um, yeah, but indeed, if, 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 you, if you don't know about others, uh, I mean, your family, your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, uh, they they can all help you uh, yeah well. yeah for sure um and but um you know once you get selected i also um maybe we will we'll get to that point later but uh, uh i i at my time when i was selected i was selected as at stec and uh, so you're about to move to a new country and you know nobody there and the nice thing that isa did was um uh, 
uh, get in touch with, uh, so send a group email of all the YGTs that were going to start uh, at the same time at STEC in order to facilitate the uh, uh, the communication between among ourselves and then uh, uh, to find an accommodation and uh, group ourselves uh, to, to make roommates and everything. So, but we'll go, we'll go through uh, this uh, uh, off sides and uh, like the background of uh, what happens after we get selected because it's also really uh, uh, interesting to, to talk about. And if you have started your PhD, uh, can you still join the YGT? If you are in uh, enrolled in a PhD, preferably look for the research fellow program. Uh, it's more dedicated for you. Uh, I graduated in June 2022. Is it already too late to apply this year? No, you can. Uh, what if one is also applying for PhD program? Position which uh, one needs to accept in roughly April. Can one accelerate the interview process process in such cases? Uh, oh, I see. So this person is enrolled, is applying for a PhD and she needs or he needs to accept it in April. Can they, can either accelerate the process in order to have an answer before April? Well, okay, there... Uh we have two things. The person is applying for PhD, so PhD or, or, or YGT? I, I think, I, if I understood well, this person has applied to both or wants exactly. to apply to both. So, as I said before, and as you also just uh, repeated a um, few minutes ago, uh, Corentin, for the master, we want people at master, for the YGT, we want people at master level, not PhD. And in any case, this year, like last year and the year before, you apply in February. We may have some republication in March of uh, certain opportunities. March, March and even beginning of April is the period for the shortlisting. We will not have interviews and even final interviews before May. May will be the big months of interviewing. Eh? Uh, most, most of the uh, interviews will take place in May. So uh, this, <coughs> the ones which are going to take place before May are very rare. So I don't know to which this person has applied, but if it's a position where we have uh, 200 applicants or 250 yeah. and to go through reading all the applications, and in the managers and HR, so we read the application, we select the best, we go to the selection. So honestly, I think I can say that April is very early in the process. Okay, understood. Um, a question concerning the screening. Is there a, an artificial intelligence uh, or computer-based pre-selection due to the large amount of candidates? If so, what are the parameters of interest? So you will see when you will apply, <laughs> that there are some questions in the application form where we ask you if uh, when you um, um, if you are a citizen of uh, one of the ESA member states if you have your uh, valid passport for this uh, country if you have applied to more than uh, two uh, um, opportunities uh, about your graduation date so these kind of questions some are really, as we said before, if you apply to more than two, you will be um, rejected. Ejected. If you have more than this one year experience after PhD, after a master, so there are some questions we ask them is also to give us an idea of who you are. <coughs> but the very, uh, let's say, eliminate, eliminate, eliminatory, 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 <laughs> Questions is really linked to um, member states yeah. eh? because if you are not a citizen of an ESA member state or of an associated member state or a cooperating state, yeah. you are not eligible for the YGT program. If you have, are of a non-member state resident in a member state, it doesn't work. 
yeah. we need to have a valid passport. So this is a disqualifying question, for example. Yeah, yeah. When, we, when we look at the system, we'll see many applications from the US or from India, from China, and they don't have a, a dual nationality with, with Europe, and it's automatically rejected. And it's like this. By the way, if you have dual nationality, mention it because the system recognizes your second nationality. Yeah. And so if you are of uh, Indian nationality yeah. and UK, the system will recognize your UK nationality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, question about... So can you upload two different motivation, motivation later for the two applications? Yes, you can. And uh, yes, you can. it's advised to do so and to personalize your motivation later for the, for the, for the job you're applying to. Uh, question about uh, probably this one is for you, Andrew. Uh, can you get along well with um, uh, English at ISA headquarters in Paris, or is French mostly being spoken there in practice? Uh, good, good question. <laughs> and, Andrew parle très très bien français. <laughs> no, it's a good question to ask. And actually, I mean, I'm from the northeast of England, so I'm barely even a native English speaker. So don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> But in, the, in Paris, for sure, there's we have um, a lot of the administrative staff and support staff, uh, for sure, French, because it's in the establishment, just like in all of our establishments. Um, it's true that we do have um, more French, I would say, people that are and francophone people working at headquarters. But the functional language is English. We have two, two official languages, English and French, but at headquarters, it is absolutely not a problem if uh, you, you're going to work in English. <laughs> I have many colleagues who don't speak a word of French almost, and uh, they can order their coffee and that's it, and it's perfectly fine. But uh, of course, one of the good things about being a YGT, you will get the opportunity to learn a language of the place that you're going. So if you're moving to Estec and you speak no Dutch, you'll get a chance to have Dutch lessons, same for Italy, same for France, so it's not a problem at all. Yeah. And also to learn in the country, probably uh, Salvi, I don't know if you speak German, but it's very interesting because if you if you are a, a YGT of Norwegian nationality and you go to uh, Esri in Italy, you will probably learn Italian while uh, you live in Italy. You don't need to speak Italian before you join, but you will most probably learn Italian, uh, let's say, in your, uh, let's say, life, you know, per personal life. Yeah, I couldn't speak um, any German before moving to Germany, but uh, ISA gives you the chance to learn the language. So I'm following uh, the German classes every Monday. I'm trying to, you know, get ahead and be able to speak to people outside. Uh, it's been um, half of a year now, so I'm, I'm getting better. So you can learn definitely and you don't have to speak the local language. It's the German classes that are provided by ISA? Yeah, it's ISA collaboration with the Berlitz program. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because we had, uh, yeah, we had something in Estec also. Uh, there was these classes. Uh, you could choose uh, Dutch, English, or French. I think. I don't know if it's still the case. Probably is. At least Dutch, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kim. Yeah, I interrupted well. you. <laughs> yeah, just like maybe a, a nice addition. Um, what is also really amazing about the YGT is just the the number of nationalities there are. Um, so even if you don't manage to, to follow classes, um, you can, yeah, it's just that the, the whole the whole group is different languages, different cultures, and you just on a daily to day, a day to day base, you're just um, interacting with these people. So maybe in the case of Salvi, if you want to learn some German, you, you just talk a bit with your German friends and by doing so, and just, yeah, just to emphasize that it's a really international environment and it's just a very friendly, very, uh, yeah, very happy environment. Great. Um, uh, if we come back to the applications, there's a question concerning the uh, requirements for the education mentions mentioned on the job offers. So this person is interested in robotics and is studying in electrical engineering, but the robotics related job offers mention that they want people who studied mechanical or mechatronic engineering. So uh, this person wonders if it still makes sense to apply. So my answer would be 
yes mm -hmm. as long as you can explain why i mean you see yourself that we request mm -hmm. abc and you don't have abc but you have d and you are ready to learn abc i mean you, you see what i mean it's always again a matter of um of what you can learn what you want to learn and what you can offer which is maybe not also in uh, let's say um, what is in the requirements at the same time of course if then we have many candidates who really fit and match the the requirements maybe they have a bit more chances than than you have if you don't have this knowledge required yeah and Kim, maybe you can add on that because there are the follow-up questions uh, directly addressed uh, to you. Uh, could you give some more insights into your experience outside of your technical degree that convinced Isa that you are the right candidate for this science policy, policy position? Um, yeah, sure. It's really, again, about research. So, for example, on the, uh, the job application, so every tiny text and term that I found, I just started like looking on the internet and even the ESA website, there's a lot out there that you can use. And also just documents that are publicly, publicly available. I downloaded them and then at the final interview when it came up, like I could mention these documents. And that again leaves enough breadcrumbs for the interviewers to show that you've done your research, that you really are keen on exploring this new new field. And again, you don't have to know everything about it because that's what you will do during the YGT, but it gives them enough incentive that you may be like a, an interesting candidate. Yeah. And yeah, so again, it's, it all comes back to researching uh, about your position. Okay, thank you. I hope you. that answered the question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's really clear. Um, so if you have a disability, how much about it should you disclose it in the cover letter. So this comes back to the to the question of disability and what you said, Andrew, that probably don't include it in the cover letter, but preferably at the end of the application process, right? That's what you, you said? Well, well, yes, indeed. We have we have a specific space in the application process where we ask ask this thing. And what I would say is please disclose as much as you feel comfortable to, because yeah, you won't be discriminated for it and you might only be helped by it because mm -hmm. We can make amendments mm -hmm. to the, the interview process, for example. Um, if the, for some reason there's something in your cover letter, um, for example, I know we have a, a diversity and inclusiveness position, YGT position, open HQ. And if you're super passionate about um, disability inclusion from your own personal experience and want to include it in something like that, for sure, include it in your cover letter. But in general, we have a specific section where you can, you can add um, anything you could whether it's a neurodiverse condition that you have or physical disability please add it so that at least we know and we can try and take it into account to try and make it as fair as possible when we go through the interview process um a very good question concerning the uh, cross world between ygt and uh, research so um we mentioned that uh, a lot of ygts go into uh uh, doctoral programs or PhDs afterwards. Um, does ESA have doctoral programs, maybe as a partnership with some university that then leads to the research fellowship? We have a program called co-funded research program, OZIP, and I would highly recommend you visit our website to understand a little bit more about this program. It's very particular. It's not led by HR. Uh, it's led by our colleague of us, who is uh, very much interested in all uh, innovative aspects. And in fact, this uh, co-funded research program is very much focused on innovation. So if you have a project, you are in a university, you have a project which you want to bring for a PhD or at your PhD, after your PhD, you can present this program to this project to ESA. A board will uh, <coughs> evaluate your proposal. And if you are selected, you uh, will receive a, a financial support, but also access to our laboratories and to our experts. 
uh, the fund can uh, cover can be for uh, three years, up to three years, and uh, yeah. But you must be you must be uh, let's say affiliated, attached to a university. And maybe yeah, all of this information is on the on the, the overall entry level program coordination um, uh, site, and I'm sure Mimi can put it in the chat. Um, but it explains all these options, including this this quite unique unicorn. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go through some questions really quickly because we already answered. Uh, uh, is there a pre-screening of candidates due to their nationality? Yes. Check the website. What do we have to include in our CV if we haven't still worked? Well, then you include what you can in your CV and uh, the recruiters are aware. Have, um... Yeah. yeah, if you have attended conferences, if you have had a summer job, if you are uh, in a voluntary work, if you are, uh, I don't know, a super sportive or musician or artist or everything which you think it's important for us to know about you, mm -hmm. yeah. you can put in your CV. Um, do you have research like Polar Research where I could apply for as a YGT? So the complete list of YGT is available on the website and there, I, I'm not yes. sure there's something related to Polar Research or at least but, not on the field. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> no, no, but in the Earth Observation Program, we have quite a few opportunities. Mm. So you, you can have a look. They are quite interesting. I mean, yeah. all I must say that be it in human spaceflight, Earth observation, navigation, propulsion, uh, launchers, uh, research and engineering in general. I think depending what you are studying, all these opportunities are quite, let's say, uh, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And have, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, a old, it's a new world, let's say. Is there only one open position available for each YGT type? Yes. Um, is the limit of individuals for each traineeship program set to only one person? Same questions, yes. Uh, how is consider apprentice, apprenticeships years of work? Good question. So, in, again, what is very important for candidates to remember is that the level of diploma mm -hmm. that we ask of degree is master's degree. So yeah, so if you do an apprenticeship you during your master's, then it doesn't count as a, as a work experience. It yeah. counts as a master's. Exactly, exactly. But it's interesting, if you have that, if you have taken that path to lead to your master, then put it and explain yeah. maybe why you have made this choice and what you have learned from this. I mean, any, what I want to say also here is that any uh, path is interesting. Yeah. Whether you have made your engineering school, let's say just after your uh, your um, baccalaureate, abitur, uh, degree, A level, whatever you you yeah. want to call it, wherever you come from, or if you have worked a little bit before, or you have done an apprenticeship, or every path is interesting. Okay. Uh, do five year long integrated master degrees count as masters for the YGT? Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, so for the experience, is zero to one year just for uh, space or all professional experience? Do internship count as professional experience? Because in my undergraduate degree, I already needed to do one year experience. If your experience as intern is before your, YGT, your uh, degree, it will count. It will be let's say valuable yeah. uh, for your application but it's not uh, let's say um it's not it's not part of the experience limit it, well yeah. it's not part of the experience limit thank you very much Andrew. yeah, yeah. okay uh so my apprenticeship uh, yes uh because often i i while you look for a question often our candidates before they make their degree they have internship experience. Actually, yeah. often we are asked, oh, what shall I do to uh, improve my CV? Yeah. And I always say, well, whatever internship you can find and you can complete, you can 
undertake will be interesting for your, uh, for your uh, let's say, career and your profile. I don't know, maybe Kim, Salvi, did you have any internships before you graduated? Uh, in my case, yes. Um, three, three uh, six months one and, uh, and a small one. So. Voilà. And some people also have double masters, you know, like, or some people uh, uh, participate to um, exchanges program. Everything yeah. counts and everything is good to write. But even things which are not experiences, which are not very much linked to your, uh, to your studies, if you, because you need to support, uh, uh, to get financial support for your studies, and you work as a barman, as a waiter, as, uh, I don't know, whatever, tut um, tutoring, uh, whatever you do, retail, it's important to mention because it shows something about you, you know? It shows that you are motivated. It shows that you have to work and learn. So don't be shy. Put this experience in your, in your application. I'm, I'm baffled by the number of questions. I, I thought I was coming towards the end, but actually it refreshed <laughs> and I got <laughs> so much more. But if you want to learn, I don't know, maybe we can, I think it's, uh, Maybe Kim or Salvi, Salvi, did you make any internships before you graduated or you just concentrated on your studies? Um, no, so like someone said, they were doing and uh, they were working at the same time of their master's degree. I was also doing the same. So I did yeah. an ap apprenticeship for three years uh, okay. with my yeah. master's degree. I'm sorry if I missed uh, some questions, but I'm just gonna, gonna go over them. Um, so number of interviews, this has been already uh, covered. Um, yeah, does ISA provide support for YGTs moving to their stations from other countries where there may be language or cultur cultural difference in life outside of ISA work? So. Okay, it's interesting that you say that, Corentin, uh, uh, because I was just going to say while you look for a question, let's tackle the relocation part. Yes. So maybe I give one or two elements and then Salvi, Andrew, uh, Kim, you can complete on what you have experienced. Uh, at ESTEC, Kim, you mentioned it. Um, before you arrive, we send a letter and we contact, let's say, all the YGTs, so the group of September, the group of October, the group of November, and we propose them to join before the date of uh, take up duty. And uh, everybody is looking for an accommodation together. And this is a very good opportunity to already uh, make um, friends or to speak with the other um, YGTs. So yes, we help you. I think it's the same also, of course, in uh, Germany or in uh, Esrin and Italy in Spain maybe not always in the same way, let's say, but ESA gives you support to find accommodation, okay? Now, if you find accommodation alone, because you have uh, decided to, to look for yourself, you can also, let's say, um, be guided by our colleague who is in charge of relocation to understand if your contract is a good contract before you sign it, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Then, so that's on the looking for a, uh, for a house. Then when you find your house and when you come here to the Netherlands or to France or Italy, you will also receive one month additional salary to help you settling up in the country. That's very important because it will help you to pay that... Uh, that additional rent you have to pay when you take a new flat or to buy your, uh, I don't know, your mm -hmm. cushions yeah. and <laughs> this kind of thing. So uh, it's uh, very important. Uh, and for the language, we, I think we mentioned it before, even if you don't speak Dutch, you will be helped by someone working at ESA to uh, understand the contract and the same for uh, Italian, Spanish, or German. Also, also worth mentioning, maybe 
as part of your regular salary, you will also get an expatriate allowance, which can top up a little bit, I, I believe, where if it's not, if you're not based in your home, exactly. in your home country. Um, and then at the very end of your YGT, if you do, if you do leave us at ESA, there's also some support to help in a removal uh, allowance to help you um, if you brought your stuff over we can help you to take it back as well uh, what you will uh, so here we have to be very a bit more precise because that's very important mm. so you will get your travel from yes. uh, your uh, place of residence to your duty station will be covered by ESA mm. okay to come to ESA to work and then at the end of the traineeship to go mm. back home or mm -hmm. back where you will work. In terms of the removal, we do not reimburse removal yeah. per se. It's the word removal. We reimburse excess luggage, luggage yes. to a certain amount. Mm -hmm. This will be explained to you exactly if you get a contract and when you receive our rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. This is very, very well and explicitly um, mentioned. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Um, there's another question concerning the people who have a particular situation in which they they had a job experience before and now they got back to the studies to get a master's degree. Can they apply for ISA YGT even if they have, for example, ten years of experience before the master's? Okay, that's very, very specific case. Okay, so in principle, so I imagine this person didn't have a master before, has worked, got a master with some experience, specific experience, and then applies. Fine, you can apply. Okay, you, no one will impede you to apply. However, what you have to remember is that this program is made to uh, kick off career, is made to for people who have no real experience. And therefore, if you already have quite some experience before, you may find that the program <coughs> is not for you because you will have a traineeship. This is a non-the-job learning program. Okay? So, if... It's there to learn. Your responsibilities will be also somehow limited. You will contribute to a project. You will be with your tutor. You will be with your manager. But you will not be the person who really is, uh, let's say, um, fully responsible uh, for an activity, let's say. Okay? I think it's important to remember that if you have experience and a lot of experience, before the master and you have decided after a while to retake your studies. Maybe this is not the real program for you. Understood. Understood. Maybe we'll come back to, um, to Kim and Salvi for an, a really nice question. Uh, someone here is um, asking you, how do you spend your after work uh, time, Kim and Salvi? Because this person is afraid to feel a bit isolated in a new country uh, without knowing anybody. Uh, what would you answer? Maybe Kim, for starters? Sure. Um, if you would go to Aztec, then I don't think you'll have any problems making friends. It's really a big group and the, the facility Aztec itself, the, uh, the, the sort of things you can do there, it's, it's mind-blowing to be honest. There's like all sorts of sport clubs. There's all sorts of uh, hobby arts clubs, such as ceramics, uh, sports. There's badminton, football. There is a swimming pool. There is a sauna. Uh, there is even like a, some sort of canteen where you can um, get rid of the, 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 the busy work week. And yeah, and also at Estec specifically. So I think at uh, the EAC uh, for Salve, it's a bit different. It's really a big community of YGTs or young professionals. So there's always going to be uh, something to do. You're always going to find people that you match really well with. And just um, currently, like the, the, the atmosphere is just, uh, it's, it's very nice. We're a very big group and, and, and just, yeah, it's, it's, you, won't, you won't find any troubles of uh, <laughs> feeling a bit lonely in a different country. On the other hand, maybe 
um, it's a bit of a bubble, but I mean, for one or two years, it's uh, it's at least a very very nice bubble. Savi, can you do you want to add something? So yeah, we are um, four or five uh, young graduate trainees, as I said, but we have a lot of interns and we have other young professionals also who are our same age and who are recently joining with other companies, maybe they're working for ESA. So um, so me personally, when I arrived, I was, I think, um, I was feeling a bit uh, lonely because I didn't know anyone. But once you start speaking to the interns or the other young professionals or all the colleagues, we started building our own little group and we do have dinners together when there's something nice that happens, someone's birthday, someone's project that was really working well. We have dinners on the weekends. We plan trips to, to, the, to the different cities. So it's not very difficult, even though we are maybe a smaller side than STEC and have less young professionals, we still have different uh, professionals. So we have the interns, like I said, and it, you are not stopped from mixing up with your colleagues and having a group with them and having activities with them. So I haven't felt um, by myself or lonely in this uh, past year. And I can add to that, that, uh, okay, in EAC, but also in uh, <coughs> France, in ESOC, the, we have young graduates, but we also have research fellows, national trainees, interns, as uh, Salvi says, who are all part of the same community. Andrew uh, has also uh, been part of the big uh, group of uh, young professionals in HQ in uh, Paris. When I was working in Nesrin, I was much younger and there was a huge community also of YGTs. And I mean, honestly, I think the YGT and the young professional community is the most, maybe, no, I don't know if it's the most active, but it's a very active one in ESA. I always make the example of the breakfast and the lunch, you know, where the big community, they are, me they are meeting uh, at the canteen, go for lunch together, go for breakfast together. Who is there? Is there? I, I think you all can say something about that. Yeah. I mean, you always say that the, the croissant crumbs. Like croissant crumbs. That's, that's in Estec. I don't know yeah. in EAC, but in Estec. For Paris sure. as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, if I can add on that also, uh, applying to YGT is not only applying at ESA, it's, it's applying for a, a social program. It's applying for a, so, a, a social environment. So I've met a really strong, I've made really strong friendships there and uh, you're, you're not alone. It was a bit particular for me because I was in ESTEC coming in, the, uh, in September, which is often the largest group. Of newcomers, but uh, it's a it's a fantastic experience to meet new people. Um, questions about the number of applicants already answered uh, before. It's around seven thousand per uh, per year. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so much questions. I think we we uh, will stay uh, maybe. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes more but I, I don't want this because this is recorded and you can watch the beginning if you uh, haven't seen because I see a lot of questions that have been answered already um, so I don't want the I don't want the recording to last uh, too long so we are gonna end in uh, 15 to 20 minutes just to take the the last questions uh, what we can also say maybe Corentin is that the background uh, in these studies and uh, of the candidates can be very, very large from uh, system engineering, mechanical, mm -hmm. uh, thermal, but also scientists, um, um, lawyers, HR, communication, uh, the, social, the science. social sciences, oh. IT, yeah. very important also IT um, background, software engineering, now I'm a geolo uh, geologist, earth observation, data analysis, data scientist. I mean, I'm thinking of a lot of, uh, let's say, um, disciplines, voilà. disciplines where you may have studied and you will find in our list of opportunities some things that's for you. I'm thinking also in uh, com and lawyers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for example, even economics. You know, quite a lot of our... Uh, 
vacancies um, will just say quite a generic scientific or technical discipline. So yes. we, get, we get asked a lot of questions about, I do this type of uh, science, am I eligible? It's not specifically mentioned. No, like we have plenty of positions that are open in general because we want to try and tap into the, the kind of skills uh, that you will get across various scientific and technical disciplines in those cases. But as Florence mentioned, there are plenty of social science, communications, uh, yeah. huma humanities positions as well. Yeah. Um, a question for the people who haven't yet uh, graduated um, during the application process, there's a question that you should put down your last uh, level of uh, qualification or highest level of qualification. So should they put masters if they are doing the masters but haven't yet graduated? No, but bachelor we know that if yeah. you put bachelors it's because you are studying for your master okay okay so if you have a master one for those who are studying in france yeah. in france if you have a bachelor for uh, others you just write the highest level diploma that you so far have yeah. and then you uh, there is a question uh, when did you graduate or when do you plan to graduate yeah. just answer the question we yeah. read, we ask questions, it's because we are interested in the answers. Um, maybe some more details about the interview. So um, all the interviews are performed online or are there any interview in person? We are no longer having interviews in person in general since we had the pandemics, but also for the young graduate training program since before. We uh, also had, we always, uh, we, we since long have interviews in, uh, let's say, not in uh, person, but virtual interviews. Okay. Um, and about the interviews, uh, uh, Kim and Salvi, do you feel that uh, it was, uh, like, how... Uh, technical was the interview how how deeply technical were the questions uh, was there were they uh, quite general about the technical aspects or or quite in depth maybe salvi you can start um i think it really depends on who you are speaking to um so the my, my colleagues now that were at that time asking me questions they didn't have an IT background, but it did want to know if I had the experience and knowledge and what solution I wanted to provide for the for the projects. So I and I've heard some people who had really technical questions because the people they were um, in interviewing were from this background. Um, so I got, I guess, not too much technical, but not too less. I got just what they needed for them to understand that I had the knowledge. Okay. Um, so, uh, there's someone asking, so is there a place or an email address where we can ask uh, questions that, that cannot be answered now and are not available on the FAQ page? Yes, I mentioned it before and probably Mimi uh, can uh, put it also in the chat, um, contact.human.resources at esa.int is the address where you can uh, ask your questions. By the way, this address is also on our webpage. Mm -hmm. So again, take the opportunity to mention that you should visit the web pages uh, on the entry level programs, read carefully about the YGT program, and uh, you just mentioned the FAQ. Yes, there are a lot of answers to your questions in the FAQ. So read it and then as you say, if you don't find the answer, don't hesitate to write to us. We, we will answer you. Okay, thank you for the answer. So is a candidate who applied early, uh, meaning first day of February, more likely to have an interview than a candidate who took time to write his or her cover letter? No, we answered that in the beginning of the, of the, of the show. Um, could Take Kim... your time to apply. Yeah. Take your time to apply. Could Kim and Salvi share one of their uh, one funny anecdote during their YGT? 
So either you can think about it right now or maybe you can come back to it uh, a bit later while I read some more questions. If you feel. I have maybe something. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> at, uh, at ESSEC, we've got this uh, ginger cat uh, called Mickey the space cat. And he's always uh, chilling around a certain bench uh, inside the building. He's a, he looks a bit scruffy, he looks a bit old, but he's like very kind, he loves to be petted. And then this one day we were having a, at the cantina some Friday afternoon uh, drinks. And then suddenly uh, someone saw like Mickey with like, because it's quite a big terrain. There's also a gold <coughs> court, for example, and there's rabbits. And then from all the cats, suddenly Mickey, he caught like a, a rabbit. So he had like mm -hmm. a rabbit uh, in, you know. <laughs> So that was pretty funny because no one expected it uh, from from a uh, Mickey the Space Cat. <laughs> also, because Mickey the Space Cat is quite quiet, actually, he's not yes. a hunter cat. He's always huh? sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's exactly. always <laughs> quite chill. And you, Salvi, do you have maybe an anecdote? Or? Um, just right now, top of my mind, um, I remember we were walking just at EAC and we were really focused uh, and then somehow someone was coming in the opposite direction and we just said hi. And then two seconds after we, we checked and actually the, this was Thomas, Thomas Pesquet, the astronaut, and we were like really shocked because it was our <laughs> first time seeing him in real life. And we said hi and then he said hi back. So oh. yeah, because <laughs> so we got really excited because uh, it was uh, we were two, three um YGTs and interns and it was the first time seeing him. <laughs> so yeah, it's quite funny because you can meet uh, the astronauts at the ESC. That's, uh, yeah, the not only you meet them but you are colleagues. You're colleagues with We them. are colleagues, right. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, so apprenticeship have been answered. Uh, good question, Kim Salvi. What are your plans for the future? Uh, did YGT give you another perspective on your career path? Kim, can you start maybe? Um, it's actually in my case makes it made it a bit more complicated because I really like what I'm doing, but I'm not sure if I want to go back to engineering or stay in sort of policy, do a mix. So um, yeah, in my case, uh, it's I'm in my second year. In about one or two or three months, I will start uh, digging deeper into what I want to do. But to answer your questions, no, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. okay. Which is already an option. <laughs> Exactly, it makes it easier, but also more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I guess I will have uh, an answer that's a bit different uh, than yours, Kim, because um, coming here, I was really focused on IT and I thought that was the only thing I could do because that's what I what my background is. But since I've discovered this um, operation support team, this operations world, and that I, I see that I can also work in it and I can also uh, you know pr provide my knowledge, I also would like to, I guess, go towards this IT slash operations job in the future. So I think ESA uh, was a really a good platform for me to discover that I, I, I like operations and I can work in this field also. Good. If I may, Corentin, what about you and Andrew? Well, then... Uh, YGT open you some doors. Uh, that's for sure. That's for sure. YGT is, um, uh, is a really strong experience, but it's not uh, only about the line on the CV. It's because it brought me confidence that I was, I was ready uh, to get on professional uh, uh, tasks. So, um, I mean, of course, putting ESA on your CV is, um, is, is, gets you a step in the door. But afterwards, it's not that. It's the, the, the experience, the, the social experience and uh, uh, living abroad and uh, speaking English and uh, also the technical aspects uh, of, the, of the professional environment there. Because you are a young uh, a young uh, professional getting into uh, and interact with people who have uh, years and years of experience in your your field in, in their field of expertise and you get to learn so much that afterwards you you, you bring so much also to um, to the companies when you search for for work afterwards so uh, yeah uh, definitely it was uh, it was really easy for me to find a job afterwards I'm really happy with it. Um, so, uh, uh, is 
there any possibility to find out more about the posi the position besides the description? What I would suggest is I encourage uh, encourage you to read about the um, ESA web pages concerning the department and uh, everything. You you will see keywords in the application. Uh, for example, uh, in my case, it was. Uh, uh, you will be performing tests in the mechanical systems laboratory. And then I checked on the ESA webpage, what is the mechanical systems laboratory? And that helped me during the interview uh, <coughs> to show that I was interested in the, the activities of the department. So what I would suggest is get to learn uh, a lot by going through the website about the projects, uh, about the mission of the department and the, the life around the technical uh, aspects of your of your description. Um, so also people are asking how can we reach out to YGTs? Of course, I think LinkedIn is a is the best options. Um, I can I can probably uh, speak for you, Salvi and Kin, but feel free to reach us out on LinkedIn and ask your questions. Uh, no no worries. Every everyone is uh, more more than welcome. If I um, maybe may add to that, even yeah. if your YGT you're interested in in applying it doesn't match with what we're doing, we might know the YGT that is doing that position. Absolutely, so we yeah. can forward exactly. you to that one. So very exactly. good point. Uh, very good point. Uh, is there any way to contact the position supervisor about the role before applying? Uh, there I'm a bit, uh, okay, I, I would say spontaneously, I could say yes. At the same time, as we mentioned before, in view of the number of uh, application that we receive, uh, if the manager has uh, 200, 100 applicants uh, to his position or her position, it may not be so easy to answer everybody. However, as you rightly uh, said right now, uh, Corentin and you all, go on the web pages and try to discover and understand let's say what uh, what uh, the position is about and what the environment is about yeah uh, this was answered uh, you, you may uh, also sorry, want to if you manage sorry if you manage to find uh, let's say the contact person then of course, you, you can write an email, but I mm -hmm. cannot tonight guarantee uh, that it will be easy to find the person and easy to find an answer to your questions. Yeah, uh, probably a question. Does gender play a role in the application process? So take this one or should yeah. I take this one? Gender, gender, yes and no. I mean, yeah. in the sense that we don't discriminate no. at all. Uh, be it uh, female, male, or even if you are in a process of, uh, let's say, reorientation, yeah, yeah. and so. <coughs> One thing to maybe mention is that in general, our YGTs, the gender balance is, is, is pretty vast. Exactly. It's pretty, it's exactly. Pretty balanced year to year, changes a little bit, but um, it just uh, goes to show we, there's no discrimination. In the I think that uh, last year, uh, I, I'm not uh, I'm not going to say 42.5%, but mm. a bit more than 40% of our recruits were uh, female engineers and scientists yeah. and um, YGTs. Therefore, you can see that we are really nearly at the 50-50. So. Okay. Um, can you talk about how coming from an over or underrepresented country will affect the application? Okay, so um, through our convention, you have, let's say, the duty of, um, of balance geographical distribution, okay, which means that we try to have um, the representation as balanced as possible. Therefore, if, as mentioned on our um, job opportunities, we first give priority to underrepresented countries, which doesn't mean that we don't consider the applications coming from candidates who are not of underrepresented nationalities. Okay, mm -hmm. 
So we have first look at the underrepresentation, but we look also at all other nationalities. And again, also there, if we look today at the representation, geographical representation, we can see that we have candidates from let's say all the countries uh, representing or uh, at ESA. So um, to say it again, everybody has a chance to be recruited, mm -hmm. although it's true, we first consider underrepresented nationalities. Okay. There's a lot of questions uh, coming on uh, related uh, to internship and YGTs. So we already answered, but uh, if you haven't had an answer for an internship application, would you be able to uh, apply for the YGT program? Yes, yes do yes. both. And yes. we encourage you to do both, apply. Whenever in doubt, because I see so much question, I'm, uh, I'm coming from this background, should I apply? Do it, apply. <laughs> do it, do, do it, apply. You know, I, last year I was saying, dream, dare, do. That was our, let's say, slogan for the last campaign. Dream, dare, do, apply. And I would say this year, no fear to fail. Just apply. Let us decide if your application is relevant or not. Is it, if you are, the, the, the only thing you have to consider is, do I have my master or am I about to graduate? Am I citizen of an under of um, an ESA member state? Yes, no. This is what you should really consider. Yeah. Okay. The rest, let ESA managers, tutors, HR decide. If yes or not, you will be selected for a pre-interview phase and then for the final interview. That's very important. On the internship, we are still. For some positions, we are still in the shortlisting process because we received also there many applications. Okay, so just see the two um, the two programs as separate programs. Mm -hmm. If you are still a student, as Andrew was saying before, for the internship you must be a student. You must be registered in a university for the whole duration of your internship. For the YGT program, you must be graduated. So obviously, the ones of you who are going to graduate in September, October, they can, they are <laughs> eligible both for the internship and for the YGT, as long as they get their master in yeah. September, October. Okay. I hope it was clear. Yeah, yeah very clear. Um, so maybe to add to that for apply, yeah. um, if if you don't get through this year, try again next year if you still are fit, because there's been also many YGTs that got the YGT in their second attempt. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't pass, let's say this year, um, there's nothing that holds you against for trying next year for the year after as well. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, the same for the internship. The one of you who maybe are, are, are uh, in the audience tonight and are not in their final year before master and have applied and are not selected, they can still apply next year. Um, a question about the integration with your new colleagues, Kim and Salvi. When you come in within the team, uh, how was your onboarding on your new team? Were you... Uh, Welcomed. Maybe, uh, maybe Salvi first. How was your integration? Um, yes. Yeah, so at the beginning, um, my manager did set a meeting with uh, everyone from the team, and then we got to chat to understand what everyone is doing, where they come from, and everything. And I also got many do documents and slides that I could read and understand more. And uh, the best thing is that my manager or any other colleague was always there whenever I had the questions. I could I would also follow them during their daily works to understand what they are doing better. So they were all very helpful and um, <coughs> and ready to be there whenever you need. So it was very smooth um, process to integrate the team and start working. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Kim? 
Uh, for me, it was very, very nice. Um, from right at the beginning, the team kind of showed you that you're not considered as just a YGT, but as a, a team member that would help everyone there. Because, um, yeah, the help, the extra help, the extra set of hands was very welcome. And everything, we have an amazing administrative assistant that just uh, made it very easy. So got the laptop, got the whole teleworking package um, on the first day, and they let me do work that was very uh, useful to them and very le relevant to them. Mm -hmm. So right from the beginning, I felt uh, very appreciated and uh, yeah, valuable. We have to say also this YGT program is going every year. So the sections and the people are used to welcome new people, newcomers in the team. So um, there is no um, problem concerning that. Uh, I also felt really well included um, in, in my team. So um, no, no worries about that. And I see also questions about the daily work life as a YGT. What if you have a problem? Uh, what if you doubt about your work and everything? You have, uh, you have a, a mentor or a tutor uh, which is associated to your YGT. So this is the point of contact uh, to which you can ask any questions you want. You also are represented by um, a human res uh, resource, uh, sorry, yeah, human resources uh, person, a staff, uh, to which you can talk about whatever you want. So um, no problem on, on that. Very important here to say, uh, everybody is supportive, okay? As you mentioned, Corentin, you have your tutor, but you also have an HR advisor. You also have uh, an entry-level program coordinator who is, can also um, hear you, <coughs> listen to you, direct you if there is a need to maybe... The, we have welfare officers also in ESA if uh, you have let's say, uh, uh, an issue that you want to discuss with someone who's not an HR person or your tutor, that's also possible. What you should also remember is that um, today, I mean, uh, sometimes people still fear to go to HR, you know, to speak, but you should not, because we are here to make your, uh, and to contribute to your uh, positive experience. We want that you are happy with your experience as YGT at ESA. So if you at a certain point doubt, wonder, have questions, just try to express it. It's not easy. You can also speak with a friend, mm. huh? but don't keep with your own, uh, don't stay with your own doubts without saying to anyone, I think. And whatever you discuss with HR in ESA is confidential. That's very important. Um, maybe uh, a question to end because I, I'm sorry, there is so much question. I think we have, <laughs> if not twice or, or thrice as more question as last year. It's really difficult, but it's so nice to, to see that so many people are interested by the program. Um, I invite you to watch the replay, it will be available on Twitch and on YouTube in the coming days uh, for free. The, a lot of questions have been answered at the beginning of the, um, of the broadcast, and I'm sorry if we can't answer everything. Again, if you have uh, more questions about the YGT life and uh, uh, the YGT process, uh, feel free to reach out to Kim, Salvi or me, or even uh, Andrew, no problem, um, on LinkedIn, for example. The, the, probably the last question we'll take uh, is um, within your first week as a YGT, what do you remember most? Uh, what has been your first feeling coming in at ESA and, uh, and your first impression? Salvi, do you want to start with that one? Um, I feel like um, at EAC, because we are not too many people, uh, it really feels like you are in your uh, f family because everyone is really there for you and you can ask and speak to anyone. There, are, there, there is no uh, ma manager or intern or there is no level. Everyone is at the same level and we do not see people from, from the above. 
And so that's why I feel I uh, really enjoy being at ESC. We really have this family uh, feelings. So that's why I remember that I was really surprised and impressed and very happy that everyone was treated the same way, no matter where we come from, no matter what job we are doing and uh, how long we've been here, everyone is on the same page. Great. Kim, you might want to add something? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's a bit of the same selfie, but when I started after two weeks, uh, after the Christmas break, um, fortunately, we had another lockdown for about six weeks. Um, that was a bit tough, but even then, um, in, with my team, for example, they were very approachable, um, very helpful, um, very proactive in reaching out to me if, to see if everything was okay. So, um, yeah, that, uh, despite the lockdown, was a very, very nice and good uh, experience. And you, Andrew? Uh, I also have a pandemic <laughs> story, I suppose. I started yeah. the year before, uh, Kim, but um, yeah, I actually remember only being at HQ for a few weeks before the, the full lockdown uh, went back into place. But I also remember the fact that we were able to meet as a YGT community. For though, even for those few weeks, we were able to then, as soon as everything was more back to normal, like we, we are, we'd already made that connection. It's that easy at ESIF to make the connection with uh, with fellow young professionals that um, I'm sure that the people that will be joining now, um, hopefully there, there won't be any restrictions or anything in the coming summer uh, and autumn. It's going to be super easy for you to, yeah. to, yeah. to make connections that will last to your lifetime. Um, Florence, do you want to take a, 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 a have a last word? Yeah, I have two last words. The, the one is that the community is so big and so diverse and varied that for sure you will meet some people with whom you have a link, you know, and then you will also discover other people with whom you would never think that you could have a link, let's say, huh? and you will discover uh, friends from uh, Norway to Greece, from Bulgaria, whatever nationalities you know and that's that's really uh yeah unique i would say and as i mean i've been coordinating these programs for as i said before eh, for more than 15 years and you can imagine that i've seen a lot of ygts <laughs> a lot of uh, national trainees but a lot of ygts since 15 years Quite a few are uh, staff now, quite a few I still see after, and we keep connected. So that's that's also the magic of this program. And the other thing I want to say is, generally speaking, again, there, if it's your wish to apply, do it. Do it with, uh, let's say, um, with... Uh, with, uh, can you say, thoroughness? Be yeah. thorough in doing it, let's say. But then, if you are selected, have fun and have pleasure in your experience. Absolutely. I will conclude with, uh, yeah, it, it was a, a, a tremendous experience to meet people, to socialize, to gain technical knowledge uh, within a, a field of experts and also together with the uh, Europeans that are passionate about space at the same place. Uh, I, I totally relate to what you told before, uh, Kim. It's, it's a really nice bubble. Uh, it's, it, it might feel a bit disconnected from the world for a couple of years, but it's so nice to be in that bubble for a couple of years. And I encourage you to just apply, as uh, Florence said, uh, there and uh, Try to make the most out of it and uh, feel free to contact us if you have uh, any questions. I hope this uh, broadcast brought you some answers and uh, I know some questions still are unanswered and I'm sorry for that. But just do as you feel uh, for your application. Uh, do what is you and it will be, uh, it will be the best and just... Uh, just apply. That's the main step to take. Uh, yeah, for the interview, for the interview, prepare, and then at the interview, be yourself. Yeah.
Thank you so much, uh, everyone. It was a it was a blast to share this evening with you. Uh, thank you for attending, Kim, Salvi, Andrew, uh, and Florence. And uh, thanks to thanks you. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much. much. And Mimi. And thanks, Mimi. And thank you, Mimi, that has been tremendously uh, posting links all night long in the <laughs> chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> And uh, I hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah, keep in touch. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank keep you so much, Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 Bye